Hey Joel, how are you lad? What's happening young fella? What is going on mate? There's, well there's plenty going on in there. The, uh, that uh, large shadow looming yep. over uh, a couple of coaches in the name of Wayne Bennett. What do you make of the, um, well in fact first I'll ask you this question, would, would you do it? Would I? Would you do the the interim job if they came to you? Like obviously, Mel's been linked to the job. But if they said to you, "We know you're busy, Maddie, but it's an interim job," would you get your hands on it or not? Joel, I I don't know where I'd find the time to be quite honest, mate. I don't know. I I, I look. I, I wouldn't go to my employer and say, "Listen, I need some time off so I can do a bit of coaching." <laughs> look, I look, Joel. I think there comes a point. Uh, when it comes to rugby league, that uh, in, in retirement, that you choose your path. Yep. And for a long time, I was uh, when I I'm, I'm sorry, as I was leaving, uh, leading up to retirement, yeah, coaching was at the forefront of my mind. But I just end up in and doing stuff in TV and the media, and that's where it's taken me. So there's a lot of people in, in line that have dedicated their you know their lives and their careers to coaching. Yeah, I'm not going to jump the queue. I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing. Oh, there was a crisis meeting this week and Demetrio was invited over to your secret room to pat your parrot in private. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Gabriel. Yeah, I tell you what, I don't think even Gabriel could save JD at the moment. Oh, it's so sad. What, what do you think What do you think of the uh, the Mal noise? Do you like that? Look, one thing about Mal, Mal's, Mal's been proven that he can coach great players. Yes. And he can handle the big personalities. See, people... Um, I, I I did a podcast myself and Cooper yesterday on the backstage. We just spoke about the South Sydney drama, and my thing about it was people always assume that if you've got a good if you've got star players and you've got a strong roster, then the job's easy. Well, it's it's never easy, and it's a different type of hard when you're coaching and when you've got great players in your squad because great players have needs and there's egos and they clash and. And so on and so forth. And there's a skill to coaching great players. And some coaches have got it and other coaches just can't do it. And I, I, I was lucky I was coached by two guys who, who were brilliant at it. One was Bozo, Bob Fulton, when it came to touring terms with Australia. He was fantastic. And the other one was Malcolm Reilly. Both of those guys had been great players. Now, yeah. you don't need to be a great, had been a great player to be a, to be a terrific or great coach. But those guys just knew how to coach strong personalities, big personalities and great players. And as I said before, it, it ain't easy. Some coaches excel at it, others can't do it. Yeah, Bennett, of course, uh, he's been able to do it. Bellamy's been able to do it. What about this Schuster situation? Matty, I was talking to Miss Isle before and I was giving it some thought. And you, you play with Owen Craigie and you see these, these young kids who, who come through and, and, and maybe a disadvantage for them is that it all came so easy to them their whole life. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now when you're playing first grade rugby league over an extended period of time, it's very different to how they grew up doing it so effortlessly and so easy. I'm kind mm. of thinking with Schuster, you know, Johnny Schuster was a, a mm -hmm. great number 12 for the, for the All Blacks, you know, and, and a, yep. a famous inside centre. And the game is, is nowhere near as um, brutal as rugby league and demanding on the body. And, you know, there's a lot more doubt. I just wonder whether maybe that's an option for him to give the rugby a crack. Possibly. Possibly, I, I dare say he'd probably played a little bit of rugby growing up. Yeah. And as you said, his, uh, his uncle, Shuey, who uh, had the sweetest right foot step of the ball, he was uh, some sort of player. But yeah, it, it's really, it's unfortunate with with uh, with Josh and Manly that it hasn't worked out. I, I really, when jo Josh is firing, a couple of years ago, he was my favourite player to watch. Yeah. Playing on that left side, his combination with Turbo and those beautiful, I won't call them, Look, there's no look passes, which is all about layering up, and there's trust passes where you play so square and you just trust that your fullback's floating around. We've seen Wade Egan is very good at trust passes, mm. and that was the that was the case with Shuey. Shuey could go up nice and square, and he just look short or out the back to turbo, just that little turn of the wrist that was just beautiful. Look, for whatever reason, there's but there's been you know he's had injuries. Uh, there's been moments of of losing confidence. It's really unfortunate. I, I like I, I like Josh. It is so easy sometimes, you know, to lose sight of the person when we're just generally talking about, you know, this guy in, that that guy out. I've always really liked him. He's one of those blokes, I think it says a lot about him, when you're crossing a road, you're about 100 metres away, and he'll yell out, Hey, Matty! And you turn around, who's that? And it's, it's Schuster. Mm. And I say, hey, 
Josh, how you doing, mate? How's Uncle Johnny going? I've always found him a really affable, good guy. Um, I do know what I, I do know what you mean, Joel. You know, I've played with brilliant players who, going through the grades when they were young, things were easy. Or look, nothing's ever easy, but they were just naturals. And you know, Owen used to get it done. And I'm assuming she would, be, would have been the same. I've only seen, I only saw little bits and pieces of him playing when he was a young bloke. But yeah, it is a different dynamic. And I remember once talking to someone about Joseph Swali when he was coming into first grade and getting a chance at the Roosters and everyone was going, mate, you wait till you see this kid. He just he just destroys blokes week in, week out at schoolboy level and the rest of it. And I said, it's really important for good athletes or natural footballers to learn the game, to don't ignore the science of the game. You've got to know the game inside out because in the case of someone like Joseph, is that he's going to come up against an opposite who's a little bit older than him, who's experienced, that would have put a circle around the East game and said, I'm up against Swali'i, I cannot wait for it. I'm just going to get in his face. And that's where when you're a young player, you've got to understand the science of the game. You've got to have a plan B and a plan C you know, to beat that guy. And it's a little bit, I, I, I can see that a little bit with Shuey. You know, Shuey's been that left side specialist and he's had his two or three sweet plays that he's very good at. Now he's trying to rebuild his career. He's got to look at outside that, you know, that those um, those favourite players, those strengths. He's got to get himself rock hard fit. I know it's hard because he's had injuries, but I just think he's too talented a player. Um, how could I say this? He's too talented. I I can see him going to a place with the right coach, and. You know, finding finding his top form again. He's not ready for the scrap heap just yet. You know what? If, if and it's a tough question, but if you were looking after him and you wanted a win-win, so it was a really good result for him. It's a really good result for the club. But I kind of thought Sharks because you get him around for Nuke and oh, yeah. McGinnis, Fitzgibbon. Bad. But mm. Is, mm. is there a team that you think would be a really good landing spot for Schuster if it was to still be rugby league? Um, Joel, look. The really simple thing, everyone just goes, Melbourne. Yeah. You know, but Melbourne doesn't always suit people. Like Melbourne, people just don't go into Melbourne and suddenly you know, they're going to they're gonna transform. To go to Melbourne, mate, your body's got to be capable of going through hell as far as training's concerned. I think it, it'd take, it's going to take a lot for, for Shuey to get, into, get his body in, into a certain position where it can absorb that type of training. So I don't know if it'll work well for him just going down basically you know, a third of the way through the season he lobs at the Melbourne Storm. The player, the coach who has got the best out of Shuey before, who, who got him fit, and he's got a history of getting players who you know, are struggling with their weight or whatnot and getting them in tip-top condition is Dez. Yeah. De- Dez has always proven that can, they can, uh, they can, he can do that. The, uh, like Moses Suley was the example. Where Moses... Uh, coming through the grades was this you know prodigy but then hit a certain part of his career where again that transition we're talking about going from you know the schoolboy expectations into NRL and him going through that period where he really struggled with his weight he really struggled with his discipline and Desi got into Manly got him in tip-top shape and away his career went I think he could do the same with Schuster oh what about that uh, having the talents of Schuster for feeder uh, by the way speaking about the Melbourne Storm so uh, I've got some uh, news boys expect Nelson to be on the bench so some mail coming mm-hmm. through that he'll be on the bench uh, for the Bulldogs game missile there you go they've, they've pinched another one off the uh, North Sydney Bears huh? <laughs> <laughs> I look at this through the glasses of high performance athlete guys and this is where I find it interesting so if Schuster was a swimmer for example I'd look at him and say all the physical attributes still there all the natural talent still there what we've mm. got is a problem in personnel around this athlete. So does he need a new S&C coach? Does he need a mindset coach or a psychologist? Does he need a new swim coach? What does that look like? But when you go to a club, Schuster mm. gets put into the Manly club and he doesn't get to choose who he works with within that club. So it's mm. not necessarily a case, I think, sometimes of, well, it's it's uh, Seabold or it's Des. It's who is the support team around Schuster yep. at any given club? Or are they bringing in outside help because they put so much importance on his career? I dare say now that he's fallen down the pecking order at Manly, they're maybe not looking externally to bring in a psychologist to work exclusively with mm. Schuster. He may be 
I guess, getting less attention now and therefore yep. feeling on the outer. I can absolutely, I, I absolutely believe that he probably felt that he was on the outer. And for a young guy, um, you know, people think, uh, you know, oh, they're professional footballers, but Mate Schuster, he's, he's just, he's a young guy and suddenly he finds himself on the periphery of the club. He's not getting picked in the 22-man squad. Um, you saw this release coming, you saw, you, but yeah, for, but look, you make a really good point there, Missile. Is if there's a club out there that go right, okay, we're going to we're going to give Josh a, a crack. Then they've got to put everything in place and really you know try to help him along the way. You, you just don't throw him in with the players as right a ten four hundreds, a couple of eight hundreds away mm. we go. You know he's not that kind of athlete, and he, I don't think he'd respond to that. You need to make some allowances, and and it's back to our original point. What we said, boys, is that. You know, it's not just coaching the great coaches. It's not just about coaching great players and big personalities as well. It's coaching guys that need a little bit of rope, need a little bit of extra attention, and being able to give it, you know, give those players that to get that get out the uh, get the most out of them and not upset the rest of the players. What's on tonight, Matty, on the show? Well. It's uh, it's Fletcher's fiftieth, uh, of yeah. course. We've got a big, uh, we've got a big celebration on the show tonight. The life of Brian. So um, looking forward to that. And of course, we'll preview. Uh, we'll talk a lot about uh, JD and his plight and Lane, uh, Wayne looming over Parramatta and Souths and everything that's going on. Tomorrow morning, Glory, you're featuring the Terminator. Terminator is the movie of the week, boys. So uh, looking forward to that. Beautiful, Matty. Hey, thanks for joining us again tonight. Have a great show. Look after the Bears here tonight. And we'll catch yes. you soon, legend. Good on you, uh, Shug. Good on you, Missile. See you, lads. There he is, Matty Johns. Uh, morning glory tomorrow. Um, so looking for that film of the week. Uh